come pass the cup between you drink it up place the light before you come through the door the dragon doesn't live here anymore sing to the choir that surrounds you and dance to the music in your soul look into the eyes that really see you place all that you have into that bowl oh, lay down your burden oh, lay it all down pass the cup between you drink it up place the light before you come through the door the dragon doesn't live here anymore good morning welcome to unity spiritual center of woodstock what a great start to the day it is my first <laughs> so, Happy birthday. thank you very much. I just had to get that out there, plus a little affirmation. I breathe deeply and feel peace in my heart. I breathe I deeply. Know that I am loved. Oh, is that perfect? It is. Did you all hear that? No. I no. breathe deeply and feel peace in my heart. I am loved. That's a great day for that today. So welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock. We're so grateful that you are here. We want to let you know that you're in the company and the community of people who are about supporting each other on their journey, their spiritual journey. And we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm, my name is Reverend Mary Patrice Wendt. I'm the spiritual leader here. And I'm Reverend Tom Wendt. I am just so excited to be here today. We've got a choir going on today, yes. Ah. Looking forward to all of you. Really this is awesome. So let's begin with a prayer. Let's take a deep breath. Mm. Divine creator that has brought this day alive and infused it with energy and love and excitement, thank you for the opportunity to be here, to breathe into it, to speak it, and to share it with others. Thank you for the gift that it is that I get to share with those around me and those around me get to share with me. Thank you for the moments that I recognize where, gosh, there, I might be bringing something along. Maybe it's something I want to share or to have with me, and maybe it's not. But I get to choose what that looks like. I get to choose how I want to work with it. And that every moment is an opportunity for possibility to live and to be beyond what I've ever experienced before. Thank you for the gift of that. Every breath that I breathe is a gift to allow it. And every moment that I open my heart is a moment to enjoy it. For all these moments today and every moment moving forward, as well as the moments I've already passed through, I say thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Let's begin with our five unity principles, the belief system that we are founded in in everything we do. Together, please. There is, there is only, only one, one presence, presence and one, one power in the universe, universe and, and in, in my life. life. God, God, the, the good, good omnipotence. omnipotence. 
that Christ's Christ Spirit lives within me. Thoughts in the mind, mind produce after, after their kind. kind. I experience God's presence and power through prayer and meditation. I put my faith into action by demonstration. Wow. You know, we have the opportunity to look at life differently than many people do here in Unity. We see the doors in our lives, the challenges, the, the victories, the successes as part of our journey forward and that each moment we're in the driver's seat of making that happen we're the ones who get to choose it to create it because there's a system a guidance system inside that knows what to do and we're about helping each other supporting each other in listening to it finding the tools to express it and to share the outcome of whatever that is. There are no mistakes. There are only moments that help us to make the decision for the next one. And we are blessed here to be able to have that environment for each and every person that wants to be a part of it. It's not an easy gift, is it? Because everything comes back to you you get to choose it and we get to walk with you when you do so thank you for being part of today at this time i want to introduce our tech team who's making it possible for you to hear in the sanctuary as well as online we've got a team of three Woohoo! we have mr george we have mr ted and we have mr joe Thank you for all the talent and the time that you put into this. This is an awesome day. It's not just that it's my birthday, but they happen to choose this day to have a choir. I know it sounds like it was planned, but it wasn't, unfortunately. But it was in the grand scheme of things, you know. The other half of our team that we really want to appreciate and acknowledge are our musicians here. We have Mr. Joe Pez on the drums. <laughs> Miss Lori Gray Malagano on the keyboard. Mr. Ken Johnson, our team leader for today. And our special guests today are musicians. Oh, I'm sorry, we have another musician that's up here. Helen, she's going to be our bass player today, even though she's not here yet. Um, but we have our singers, our singers, the really big people that are bringing the, the music even to a higher level. I want to acknowledge Mr. Joe Joswiak, who's in the back right now, but he'll be up front soon. Miss Kim Joswiak up front here, stand up and give everybody a wave. Gail Garcia, stand up and let them know who you are. Gwen Austin, oh, did she go downstairs? No, there she is. Oh, there you are, I'm sorry. Gwen Austin, Donna Ireland. Donna might be downstairs. Donna Ireland, Maria Donahue. Good job. And Isabella Don Donahue, who I believe is downstairs. They will be up, they're just a little smaller in stature but big in spirit, so they will be joining us later. Are you going to meditate? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mary Patrice. Happy birthday. talking to you across the water across the deep blue ocean under the open sky oh my baby i'm trying boy i hear you in my dreams i feel you whisper across the sea i keep you with me in my heart 
you make it easier when life gets hard Lucky I'm in love with my best friend Lucky to have been where I have been Lucky to be coming home again They don't know how long it takes Waiting for a love like this Every time we say I wish, wish we, we had, had one more kiss. I'll wait for you. I promise you, I will. I'm lucky I'm in love with my best friend. Lucky to have been where I have been. Lucky to be coming home. Lucky we're in love in every way Lucky to have stayed where we have stayed Lucky to be coming home someday So I'm sailing through the sea To an island where we'll meet You'll hear the music fill the air I'll put a flower in your head For the breezes Through the trees They move so pretty You're all I see As the world keeps Spinning round You hold me Right here, right now Lucky I'm in love With my best friend Lucky to have been Where I have been Lucky to be coming home Lucky we're in love in every way Lucky to have stayed where we have stayed Lucky to be coming home someday Let's enter into a time of relaxation, a time of reflection. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you And the pure light Within you Guide your way on Guide your way on May
Let's continue on into this moment of reflection and quiet. If you'd like to close your eyes or find somewhere in the room to focus in on, just to, to be able to be in the moment. To breathe into the moment of now. Oh, deep breath. Take a deep, deep breath. The gift that Spirit gives you, each and every person, the gift that Spirit moves into you to be able to do all that you have inside. Feel it sustaining you, opening you, glowing in you, in every cell of your being. Feel it feeding your soul with the insights and inspiration that comes from all of the power that it brings. Just allow it to expand you. You're here now. You're here. Be here now. Even if something has followed you in, you're here now. You're in a place, in a space that, that knows you. This presence knows everything about you. It's holding you if you are feeling concern or worry or just unsettled about whatever is on your mind. It's dancing with you and sharing the joy in you if you're in the moment of feeling the power and the excitement of what is right here, right now. It is with you through all of it. It matters not where you might feel you are at the moment. It just wants you to know you're not alone. Allow yourself to breathe it in again. moving in from your lungs, floating up into your head, into your mind, into your, your eyes and your ears, opening them and filling them with this wonder of the moment of now. Filling your voice and your throat and your and your chest with everything that the potential possibility inspires in you. Flowing out into your hands to support and empower you to do with them all that is within you to create. flowing down into your abdomen, into your hips, into your legs, and tickling your toes. The wonder of this moment is you. The gift for every challenge you face is you.
the gift for every success in life is you. Allow yourself to be empowered in this moment. Claim it for your own. Allow it to expand in you and inspire you and show you what is next to do or be or say or think. Give it free reign to play as you. And breathe it in deeply. Thank you, God, for this moment of you, with you, and in you. And so it is. Amen. Baggage claim, anyone? <laughs> Has anyone here flown? Raise your hand if you've flown. If you've ever been in a plane, yeah, right? What is the furthest place you've ever traveled? You can just shout it out. France? France? Germany? Japan? 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 Whoa. Cleveland? Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Easter Island for me was awesome. Did you experience having connecting flights on your trip? Yeah? That's an experience in itself, right? Have you ever had your baggage lost on a trip? <laughs> well, I looked it up to find out what airport has the most lost baggage Sadly to say, it is O'Hare International Airport. <laughs> they, they lose between four and six bags per 1,000 travelers. No, that's not so bad, I guess. But except if you're the one that's lost on. But fortunately, they find 97% of them and are returned in two days. So that's a good thing, right? Baggage. Now, when we talk about baggage in terms of us spiritually, it might have a different connotation, would you say, right? Like, ah, uh, he or she came into the relationship with a lot of baggage. Do you want it returned in two days? <laughs> I've got a lot of baggage from my childhood that I'm really working through. It seems in that context that it describes a negative impact of past experiences, right? It's, it's most often connected to a difficult situation or experience, and something is really hard to face. But some part of you has resolved to protect yourself from ever having that experience again. Would you agree? Right? It's like we packed up this experience of life and we're just dragging it around with us to the next one because we got to know what's in there to protect ourselves. Would you agree? Yeah? And there's this fear that we carry with it, that we pack in with it, because we're afraid that, oh, it's not going to, I, I really have to be diligent in protecting myself because I'm just not sure if I'll always see it coming if it comes around again. And I've got to be really diligent in making sure that I see it and I'm aware of it. Have you ever tried to ignore your emotional or spiritual baggage at times? I'm really good at that. <laughs> Would you be okay if you could lose it? No mental forms to fill out to get it back, right? 
Or do you take time to unpack it? I had a big epiphany this last week. It's pretty embarrassing. More on that later. I'm going to put it off as long as I can. <laughs> there's a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, there's a, a word common in unity heard more in the past, uh, more so than you, than you hear it now. And it's, the term is called quickening. Um, it refers to spiritual quickening. And I, I see spiritual quickening as, as an outflow of divine energy that is, that is, that is within us. And it often is uh, following a, a, a profound discovery or affirmation of truth. And to quicken is to become more spiritually alive. Um, I'd add to that, I'm quickened when I hear really good music. You know, I was listening to the choir practice and I, was, I, was, I felt more spiritually alive as a result of that. Uh, whenever Journey comes on, the, or Whitesnake come on, uh, the, my tunes, you know, I, I'm, I'm quickened, I'm ready. Have you ever experienced a new spiritual aliveness with a profound realization or maybe a, a change in your life or change in attitude where you, you felt that's being quickened? It's a time when we're no longer bound by, um, by past perspectives, by fear or doubt, or maybe, maybe some of that baggage we've been carrying on, carrying around with us. I'm about to share with you a true story shared by the previous director of Silent Unity, our friend Linda Martella, Reverend Linda Martella at Whitsett, about someone who experienced a quickening. Um, this lady, uh, her secret desire was to sing professionally. Uh, but every time, every time the desire surfaced, she remembered her first music instructor telling her she didn't have the talent to be a singer. So, and that desire, though, burned for decades. Uh, always ignored, always buried. But it arose again when she was studying prayer in her experience with unity. And as she was experiencing that, that um, those words, she realized the power she had given those words decades ago were still with her. Any of you have those words with you that you heard years ago that still influence you? And because of it, she never pursued her vocal training. She never joined a choir. She never joined a, 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 a community choir. She didn't ever try to sing karaoke or have fun with it. She always remembered she didn't have the talent. However, after studying with prayer and realizing the real effects that those words have on her, and words and thoughts create our reality. They create our life. Those words were creating her life in terms of music for decades, weren't they? She experienced, she, she says, I need to pivot. She need to change her thoughts from, never mind what this music director stated, I just want to sing. So she signed up for vocal lessons and she experienced a quickening, a spiritual aliveness. In, her, in the book, Myrtle Fillmore's Healing Letters, that's Unity's co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore says we are quickened by the Spirit. She says, it isn't people in unity who quicken us. It isn't the human desire of our individual heart that makes, makes uh, life flow through us at a higher level. What quickens us is the stirring within us, the same Christ spirit within us, the presence of God within us, the same presence that our master teacher and elder brother, Jesus of Nazareth had. That's what quickens us, is accessing that spirit. And somehow words from others prevent us from accessing that spirit. Isn't that something? I know I'm guilty of that. We have within us the same divine energy as Jesus of Nazareth, same. He wasn't the great 
exception. He was the great example of what we could do with that, with that energy. Myrtle Fillmore says, <clears throat> pardon me, to be truly healed and quickened by the life more abundant, one must forget the past and limitations of the past and turn every ounce of energy to that divine spirit within us. We've got to believe in ourselves, not some words that some teacher told us years ago that were mistaken. Give it over to the one presence and the one power in the universe that we talk about in the five unity principles. And that presence and power is stirring our lives. That's the presence of God within us. Our friend who contacted the vocal coach, she was quickened, she was stirred by that energy. I'm just wondering where she is now in terms of her singing. Doesn't matter how good it is, she's having a great time and my guess is she's more talented than she ever thought she could be. Have you ever experienced where your brain, your intuition, your core authenticity, your, your instincts were calling to you, screaming to you to do something, pulling you in that direction and you chose not to do it? Maybe because of something uh, uh, you were heard, maybe it was a time you were ashamed or you just missed the mark. Those thoughts from the past have real effects on us. But in unity, we teach you how to reverse those effects, pivot your life, pivot your thinking, and just put energy into those thoughts that can lead you in the direction of your vision. A good start is we have a prayer box right over here to my right. Submit a prayer for your vision, see yourself enjoying your vision, and that would be a good start. More on that later. I like that you mentioned, you know, it's not just experiences, it's uh, what words people have shared with us mm -hmm. that sometimes get tucked into that suitcase that we carry around in life, right? Mm -hmm. So as a minister, I really try my best every week that I speak to create these talks about exploring possibilities and feeling empowered and and live who you're meant to be and live like the gate was left open and and feel I feel really passionate about that until I realized the one who needs to hear it the most is me so you get to walk with me on my journey today I have held back living my best life out of fear Fear that li living my potential would cost me the relationships I love, the people around me that I love. That somehow, if I truly become who I want to be, if I truly show up in my shoes, that mm -hmm. people aren't going to stay in my life. This fear impacts my ability to tap into that stream of what's calling me to change. Fear because listening has cost me many significant relationships in the past several times. It's not that I'm making it up. It's that it's truly happened over and over and over. This fear has convinced me that it's more important to keep the things intact out here instead of following what's expanding in here. Because I've got a really good life. I really do. And I don't want that to change and I don't want to lose it. I've gotten, this is like the best time of my life ever. Keeping that suitcase closed and locked or releasing the latch puts me at that place again where I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know. But something is calling to say, hello, I'm in here. And you know how you, the old... Um, 
commercials where the suitcase gets banged around and knocked around. I'm like, there's part of me inside of the suitcase that's kind of punching out and saying, yes, there's pain in here that has occurred in the past, but there's something else. And will you look inside to find out? As I think about it, to me, it echoes sort of that biblical passage where the devil, we call devil it's just our conscious self, our personality self that's really not in line with what our best person is, talks to Jesus and says, I'll give you all of this. Look at this. Look at the, the cities, the kingdoms, all of this great. I'll even feed you. I'll feed you all of this from out here if you'll focus on that. If you'll focus out here and just see how the amazing things are because there are a lot of amazing things. And there is a lot that can be done, good things that can be done with what's out here, right? But Jesus said, no, I'm not... I'm not going to focus out here. I'm not going to put all of my, who I am into what's here and say that it is more important than what's in here. That what's in here takes precedence over even the best things that can show up out there. So I'm learning my lesson this week. Byron Katie, who is the originator of a tool called The Work, provides methods, a method to unpack your personal baggage if you're looking for a tool, unpacking your outer experience, and you can check her out online. She says, the only time we suffer is when we believe a thought that argues with what is. In my case, it was what was. The being of me in previous significant relationships, whether it was parental or romantic and sometimes friendship, when I chose to make that decision to follow here, ended them. Either I was disowned or obstacles were put in my way to go to school, to, to get an education beyond high school, or whatever that looked like. Whatever my goal was, it would, because my vision of the possibility for me could not be envisioned for the person that I was with. I was see seeing and being beyond what was comfortable for them. So I am here again. In the best relationship, in the best life I could have ever imagined, feeling this internal pull again, and I'm like, ah, oh. telling me to trust, telling me I'm not going away, I'm going to keep bugging you until you start listening, pushing on that suitcase from the inside, pushing to try and get me to unlock it, to talk about it, to work it through and say, okay, whatever happens from here, Okay, I will accept that. Time to unpack. So it sounds like you were surrendering your authenticity, uh, your freedom to be authentic. Anybody else here ever do that? I sure have. <clears throat> This is another uh, true story from Reverend Martello Whitsit. It's about a, a gentleman who had been uh, hiding most of his 50 years. 
in his early teens, he realized that he was gay. Uh, But he feared revealing such news in his small community, in his employment, would, um, and even in his family, would result in uh, disastrous results. So without the resources or support that he needed, uh, he gradually closed the door on all relationships, uh, buried himself, and carried that baggage around for, oh, what about, more than, for about 50 years or so. He found unity at the low point of his life. Over the next couple of years, engaging both in therapy and in <clears throat> unity teachings and unity prayer work, he learned how to, again, pivot his attention from what he thought would be true, what he was afraid of, what he was, uh, he was essentially a slave to fear, and to pivot his attention away from that to what he wanted in his life. So he turned his full attention to his deepest desires, he, his relationships with his family, his relationships at work, and his personal relationships also. He rekindled new relationships. And so joyfully and tearfully, he shared with Reverend Martillo Whitsett that he had, he had felt lost and worthless in the past, and now he felt free and true and worthy of meaningful conversation and relationship. No longer a slave to fear. He was quickened. Please ask yourself, where am I in my life, <clears throat> in my relationships, where I cannot be myself? Where, am I, where, am I, where have I lost the freedom to be me? And start working in it with prayer. Start working with that for the direction you need in prayer. Where are you chained to, to responses or past experiences that keep you small in terms of your genuineness? in terms of who you can be. Author Bet Howland says, she says, for a long time it seemed to me that life was about to begin, but there was always some obstacles in the way. Something had to be gotten through first, she says, some unfinished business, um, some time to be served, a debt to be paid, always something, but after that, life could start. She says, at last it dawned on me that these obstacles were my life. I invite us all to move from our obstacles to our dreams, from our challenges to the possibilities that are welcoming us and awaiting our arrival. If you wish to be no longer a slave to fear, a slave to obstacles and challenges and baggage, and instead experience the quickening of spirit, drop the baggage and try prayer. I mentioned our prayer box over here. Is our prayer chaplain with us today, Jackie? I don't think so. Typically she is. So that's not available to you right now. I can be available. Okay. After the service, you can pray with Reverend MP. You can call Silent Unity, Unity's 24-hour prayer service, The number is 816-969-2000. If you need the number, I'll be glad to forward it to you on your phone. Just see me after the service. And as I said, you can also contact your your minister, Reverend MP. Start to find the freedom that is calling to you to release the baggage, let it go, and move forward into your possibilities and dreams. In closing... This outward experience will often try to lock you into choosing it and sustaining it more than choosing and growing what's inside. It's really attractive. It really comes with a lot of heartstrings, doesn't it? And it will ultimately keep you in fear of change. A slave to that fear that if I truly come out to be who I want to be or who I am called to be, 
that I won't continue to be able to enjoy these things. It may continue to convince you to do that until it doesn't anymore. You may choose to drop the baggage or unlock it and find the gift inside of it. For me, unpacking my suitcase was not the end of my relationship. <laughs> this time, I'm very happy to say, because when you are truly in the environment that supports choosing the child of God within you, it's not going to go away. It just becomes an even better gift on top of choosing this part first. My calling is to more fully awaken and welcome and express who I am as a spiritual leader, as a minister, and as a human being, which means my communication style is going to be changing between us, between us. And my visions may become a little more passionate. Just saying. But I want to show up authentically and as uniquely me as I can. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Where are you? We can talk. Namaste. So it is. Amen. This is exciting. Oh, I know. So cool. Oops, I'm gonna move over there. I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called by name. I've been born again into your family.
Thank you, thank you. Awesome job. Wow. <sighs> That's what I call a service. Each day is a new beginning. Every day I learn and grow. Yes, I agree. All right, got to come back down a little bit. Not too much, a little bit. All right, this morning we transition into our time to welcome your gifts and your, and your tithes. And if you are in line, you can go to our Joy of Giving tab. Just know that whatever you feel guided to share, that everything you do or give supports being here. We are self-supporting. We don't receive anything from any other organization to make this happen. And we host other organizations to come in, children's groups, 12-step groups, book studies, everything. And we are working on getting more out there. So check in, just saying. So if you're in the sanctuary with us, please hold your gift in your hand. We're going to say a prayer, a short prayer together, please, to bless it. Together, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. child of God in you today. And if you need a little help, I'll pray with you after service. these gifts and you givers we say thank you god three times together please thank, thank you god, god. Thank, thank you god, god. Thank, thank you god. god amen all right we have a few announcements um, unity spiritual center is based in prayer so like tom mentioned there are ways to receive prayer here there is a prayer box here to the right of fellowship hall and you are welcome to put that, your thought, whether it's a joy or a concern, we'll pray over it for 30 days. We'll also send it to Silent Unity for the same. You can also stop in and see me at the end of the service today. Um, and if you'd like to hold something or someone in prayer, there are candles at the end of the aisle just for $2. We will light them every single Sunday until they burn out. That stays your candle. So, 
things that we have going on. We've got classes, check and groups, check them out online. We have more coming up. Our youth, oh, that one didn't meet today, but they're meeting August 6th is their next meeting. The Lending Library is highlighting a new section called Unity. And of course, I always like to say, it might pay you to check it out. Who knows? Uh, Dinner with Abraham is coming back and is going to begin uh, August 25th. Please come by and check it out. They are working with the books and the materials based on Abraham Hicks. So if you're interested, stop in to see that. We have a potluck sponsored by the Greeters on August 27th. Woo! It's going to be awesome. And then if you're interested or inspired to become a greeter, they will share with you what that's about and what it's like. You are most welcome to be part of it. Um, Sue Battis, uh, just an update on her. The last I checked in with her, the surgery was successful. So just so you know, if you are holding her in prayer, keep holding her in prayer because the journey of healing is still going on. Lee Frisch, I have a kind of an update. We know that she's no longer at, um, at Good Shepherd anymore. I'm not sure exactly where she's been transferred to, but I will be checking in to find out if I can get you more information for that. Important, upcoming church chat. We're going to find a date to, to hold a meeting so you can get some new important information. You'll want to be there. Look for the e-blast on that. And our upcoming World Peace Day Congregant Information Gathering. Wow, lots to say there. Uh, we'll probably have about a 15-minute conversation after a couple services, just so you know what the planning committee has been about and what's in place and all the excitement around that. The next planning meeting will be August 14th. So if you don't happen to be here after a service to hear about it, you're always welcome to join the Zoom call to find out in person with all the other volunteers. Volunteer openings, take a look. Anybody who's interested in becoming part of our tech team, please let us know. Greeters, you'll get a chance to visit with them. You can visit with them today if you're interested. Um, Tina, the lead, our coordinator for the the team, who is at the back, she'd be happy to chat with you about it. Um, We have a hospitality leader opening and landscaping. Here's a real cool thing today. Some, for some mysterious reason, I think it was God inspired. There is not fellowship after the service, but because it's my birthday, if you are interested in joining me and Tom to go somewhere for lunch, we need to just know who would like to go so we can plan a place that could accommodate all of us. So let me know. I'd be excited to have you. And I think that's it. Yay. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to we're going to stop stand for our prayer for protection and sing our peace song. <laughs> I appreciate you, Ken. <laughs> you keep me on track. <laughs> Together please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. One, two, three, two, two, three.
through the sea <laughs> to an island <laughs> where we just we'll happened meet. to come across my YouTube You'll hear feed. The music <laughs> fill the thank air. you. I put <laughs> my oh, thank your you. Head. Though the breeze We're gonna go to dance. Yeah. The trees, Are you interested in joining us? So pretty, I, it depends on how many people, but a really good place is probably Team Garden here on 47. Hold yeah, you right try to pull her right in. Lucky okay. I'm in love with my best friend. Lucky to have been where I have been. Lucky to be coming okay. home. Uh, George is here in the gray. You Lucky we're shirt. in love in every way. Lucky nice to, to have you. stayed oh, where we have yeah. stayed. Lucky to be coming home oh, Sunday. I'm glad you came too. Do you live in the area? Ooh, That's right. I freak, like I Nisha sounds very familiar to me. Did you was your hair longer then or something when you came before? Or it was about the same length. Yeah, I thought it was longer. I'm glad you came.